conference or whatever it's called. Um, so basically, I know uh, Donna, Robin, Matt, and myself attended, and would love to hear your feedback on that. Um, I think the idea is, of course, to share what we've learned and also, I guess that's the main main thing, to see if it's where the investment is to continue going. Anyone like to kick the conversation off? I don't know. Um, this year's legislative workshop was more of a, uh, started in the morning at 8 o'clock with how bad our budget is for an hour and a half. We had about an hour and a half of legislative information. Then we had other things. And then we had an hour and a half of how bad the budget is. And so I was very vocal, not very vocal, but very verbal on my, um, on my evaluations. Thank you. I'm sorry. More slow than ever. Um, that we paid for a legislative review. We didn't pay to hear about how bad the budget is because we know how bad the budget is and that if they're going to tout it as legislative workshop, then they dang well better deliver. <laughs> and believe me, I was very brutal. I wrote up the storm. Um, the workshop itself, the next two days, um, truly I don't remember anything that was outstanding. I do know that um, the ASBA has been in turmoil the last six months, yeah. and it really showed. Um, when we went in to vote for the state officers, it was, um, it looked like it was going to be a very waspy day, and some of us were a little, wanted to be a little protesters, so I joined the Rebel Alliance and voted against the ASBA recommendations. For one board, uh, one member, and um, didn't hear the end of it all day. However, I still stand by what I did. Um, but the rest of the conference really showed that they were in turmoil, looking for their their new leader. Um, supposedly, at the end of the month, we'll get our new ASBA director. And perhaps that person, and I don't even know who it is, will, will pull them up by their bootstraps and get it back on track. But like I said, I don't remember anything but voting with the Rebel Alliance for somebody other than who they recommended. And um, so I was really disappointed. I'm, I, I like going. I like talking to the board members. I like seeing the presentations from other boards of what's going on. Um, it's not like the national conference where you go and you go to a workshop that people are finally catching up with Arizona on their uh, free and reduced lunches and all the things they have to do to accommodate that. Um, we're right here in the state where everybody's facing the same thing. Um, however, I don't knock the nationals because it's kind of fun watching them catch up with us, even if it's in the negative, and learning more things. So this year's conference, I really feel like we got, we didn't get our money to that. And I, like I said, I was very disappointed. But I think part of it is the upheaval that's, that happened ASBA level, and but they made the districts pay for it. So. Thank you, Robin. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt? Okay. Yeah, I I agree with Robin immensely. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think we went to quite a few sessions together. I know, but I don't remember anything outstanding. I do I. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a few of the sessions and you know, it was uh, not that exciting this year. I agree with that. I do want to mention um, in the uh, vendors hall going around talking to vendors is kind of interesting when they find out you're from Creighton I've heard positive comments regarding Ed Linda and Roy oh Roy's there yeah oh he's a good person to work with or Linda or Ed so when you're going through the vendors 
those who work for Creighton, all you're getting on feedback is positive, which is great. I think so. And I agree, you know, I went to the breakout sessions and nothing was majorly outstanding. I remember redistricting, but um, it's because I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I attended one or two of those as well. Um, <coughs> I had brought, uh, well, first of all, I put this on the agenda, and then I had all these things I was excited to come here and talk about, which I've left in my car. So um, rather than running out there, I've been making little notes of what I can remember the last few minutes. Um, the legislative workshop, I found it interesting to see there were things that we knew about how bad it is, but it, it was interesting that Arizona, at a certain point, really was among the worst of the worst. Uh, and historically, looking at it historically, uh, the economist from ASU, Dennis Hoffman, was saying that we basically don't have recessions in this state, or that's been the thought, not real recessions. And he showed the slide, which I wish I had with me, um, of the percentage job loss of all the previous recessions going back to World War II, and then how many months it was before that came back up. And it was these little tiny dips below the, let's see, that's the x-axis, and you just saw these little tiny dips, and then they came right back up. And it was 10 different colors of that. And then you saw the current one, which was a red line that just kept going down and down and down. And the others, the most we'd ever lost was, I think, 2 or 3% of our jobs. And now we're up to, I think it's 12% of our jobs that we have lost. So four times as bad as any previous recession we've had since the Great Depression. And at this point, since the recession began, so we're now um, a little over four years since the recession began, we were always back to where we were in terms of employment, um, and then some. At this point, a lot of times it was within uh, two years we had recovered all the jobs that we lost during the recession. At this point, we're just bottoming out. We, we have just barely started even moving back that direction, and we have probably four or five more years before we get back to the employment that we had in 2007. So uh, the other thing that was interesting was that Arizona joins the ranks of the states we think of around the quote-unquote Rust Belt in that we have been a domestic out-migration state, whoever would have thought the last few years. Um, we are a domestic out-migration state the last couple years, meaning that more people are moving from Arizona to the other 49 states than are moving here from the other 49 states. We continue to grow due to international immigration as well as a high birth rate of having a young and fairly fertile population. So, uh, but we, we don't, um, there you go. But um, that will probably turn around. Arizona will probably not stay that way, the way some old industrial states are. But for the time being, we were hit as hard as anybody else. Um, I, our legislators, I, I didn't think there was anything extremely revealing, but I, I think it was a kind of an overall overview. As far as the workshops that went on outside of the legislative portion, um, I was impressed with a program that Osborne has that focuses on math in middle school. They started off initially by taking these students who were hitting the top levels of what they could offer and shipping them to North High School, North, excuse me, Central High School, for, um, for to take high school level math classes. and. Then they advanced to where they began working with the uh, Phoenix Union curriculum folks in math and developing high school level math. In other words, not just Algebra 1, but it was either Geometry or Algebra 3-4, and they are being offering that to 8th graders. And the vast majority, and, and their demographics look like ours, the vast majority of their students are in 8th grade taking at least Algebra 1 or more. Um, they have doubled the amount of time. They have certain days where they have a, a double period for math. So they have really increased the amount of time spent on math. And then the, um, again, they work very, very closely with Phoenix in determining where those students um, get placed. Um, also, I went to a session on move on when reading. And I can't remember. I think that, um, is that Ms. Ferguson and Young might have been at that one as well. Um, that was very interesting because it became very clear that it was a, an unfunded mandate from the state and that 
the I don't remember if the person from ADE actually said asked us not to shoot the messenger. <coughs> or if we were commenting on that, but uh, rural districts and uh, small districts did not like the fact that. And this could apply at a school the size of Biltmore Prep. If you have one math teacher, or one reading, in this case one reading teacher, since it's reading, uh, you have to, not only if that, if that student's not reading by, uh, at grade level, or at least approaching by third grade, you have to pull them back into third grade, which I knew, I had not really realized that you cannot have them taught by the same teacher. If you are in a small school where there is only one reading teacher in third grade, that could be difficult. The other thing is this has to be based on their AIM scores, and we have not traditionally gotten their AIM scores in time to decide where they are being placed. And this is information that may be coming out as schools are starting the school year, after they've started the school year. So ADE has said they are working with the vendor to try to, uh, with the AIMS vendor, to try to get us the scores sooner. Um, I'll sort of believe it when I see it. And I think when you have that sort of assessment tests, if you don't get the, the response in a soon enough time, it's really no good. It, uh, other than ranking schools and ranking students, it doesn't help us guide us toward interventions. So um, it, it, there were a lot of exceptions to move on when reading, which maybe that's good that there are, but then it makes it somewhat pointless. Um, the state trust land, I... Can I ask you a question about that? Why can they not have the same teacher? What is their assumption? I think the assumption is that the teacher must be failing if the student isn't, isn't making the grade, um, uh, or that it's just a time to give a, another teacher a try. And uh, this is only the third grade. It doesn't take into account where the child, or what education that child had in kindergarten, first, or second. I, I mean, we're going to have a presentation on this uh, in February anyway. Okay. But, uh, but this is yeah, I put it on the agenda. But uh, it's it's important, and so I appreciate bringing it. And then um, state trust land. I sat through a presentation on how the state of Arizona could maximize revenue from our state trust lands that we have. And apparently every state, I didn't realize, not just western states, were given state trust lands for education. But many of them, those are long gone. Um, as a younger state, we still have a lot of ours. Uh, New Mexico, far and away, it's the most revenue, um, largely because of gas and oil that we don't have. Washington gets a fair amount because of timber. And I think basically ASBA's stance, which often butts heads with environmentalists, is that we should just do as much logging, do as much development, um, build as many shopping centers, whatever we can to get the most amount of revenue. Um, I would personally don't think that our education funding should be continued <coughs> primarily upon those kinds of wild swings in the economy and whether or not you know, there's a market for whatever our state lands can produce, I think we need steady sources of revenue. Um, re redistricting, uh, in terms of uh, redistricting districts, was something that I also attended. And uh, I, I, don't, I think we may be having a discussion on that. I, I put it on the agenda. I talked a little bit to uh, Representative uh, Doris Goodale from Kingman, who also is a former school board member for 18 years. Yes, and okay. she was on one of the boards that, vol on one of the districts that voluntarily consolidated and is a large, a big proponent of it. Um, but there, I think it was well laid out by the people who presented that it is not necessarily, if you've seen one school district consolidation, you've seen one district consolidation, that it's not something that if it works well in one district or with a couple districts, it's going to work well with everyone. And that you really have to study it before going in and see how everybody's property taxes are affected. And the other thing is that, and, and I think Ms. Young made this point quite vocally, I was quite proud of her, that of all that we hear about it is never about student achievement. That whenever we hear this conversation, it is always about money. And nobody has ever asked, well, are our students going to learn more or learn better if we, if we consolidate districts? 